Hello, everyone. This is your host, Carrie Logan, at Master the Upper Rooms. Today, we're going to be talking about pride. Why am I like this? Many people stop and ask themselves this question on their journey throughout life. I did several times, especially when experiencing a spiritual awakening or experiencing doubts within myself. When someone stops and asks this question, why am I like this? They are first called or guided to go within, shining their flashlight into the shadows where they hold important information, clues, and tools. Most people are unsatisfied with their life, behaviors, themselves, lack of motivation, or that inner critic that keeps sabotaging their happiness. What is truly happening is that this person is tired of being stuck in 3D human consciousness and desires, 125, a sense of relief. The relief and answers they seek are available 24-7 in the 3D human consciousness vibrational range. So, this person would need to jump up into courage, 200, and then rest upon the step of being satisfied, 250, and content with life. Stop fighting and make peace. Accept what is even when we don't like our current reality. Sounds easy, right? I have to laugh because sometimes one will want to scream and cry for relief. But I've done that. Yelling at God or finding fault or blame in someone else instead of going within and discovering why I manifested this into my reality. It can be challenging for some people because it would mean the death of the ego and old self. We have known people who grab onto change and embrace it while others run for the hills or hide in a cave. Some people feel and think that their life story or specific life event defines them. It's a part of their identity. Who am I without my identity, some might say. Jumping into unfamiliar territory can be scary, and fear can talk a person out of taking that leap of faith. After all, fear has been controlling and dominating many people's lives who are stuck in 3D human consciousness. Instead of coming from the perspective of what is missing, fewer people, they don't stop and look at what they have accomplished and achieved. Most people skip this step because they stay focused on the negative. And negativity is easy, easier to concentrate on than everything to be satisfied with in life. So today, we want to support everyone in comprehending and seeing if one is stuck in 3D human consciousness around various subjects and how to get unstuck within the vibrational set point of pride. Therefore, we will give examples of what it would be like for a person stuck in the frequency mindset of pride, which vibrates at 175. And when I say we, my guides and team from above chatted away. One evening, as I downloaded all this exciting information to share with you today, and yes, I found it interesting because I could relate, relate it to my life when I was stuck and 3D human consciousness. So before I dive into this concept, I must give some trigger warnings. Some examples might shine a light within your shadows and shock you. If this happens, take it as information. It is an opportunity to go within and get yourself unstuck because we want you to discover your authentic self hidden within the shadows unapologetically. And if we are going to be completely transparent here, this can be a scary task. Will the people within your inner circle and world still embrace you? Does fear whisper in your ear that a specific person might reject you, turn their back on you, or cut you out of their will or inheritance? Again, learn to recognize that inner voice. It is the voice of fear. Your ego 
or your higher self? Does this voice believe in you or wants you to give up before you start? To shine my light on the subject of pride and parents who can be stuck in 3D human consciousness, I've always considered myself the black sheep of the family. There have been several times in my life when my father made threats to cut me out of his life and would if I did not do as he demanded. I'm not too fond of ultimatums or blackmail threats, so my attitude was exemplary. I said, fine, please do it. I am perfectly fine without your money when you die. I know I will be taken care of. Of course, this made him angry. 150. But this was my life, not his. Now, some people can do this, and others are too scared. That is why one must grab onto courage and discover a new way of living, thinking, acting, and what one's heart desires. I have used the steps in mastering the upper rooms myself, and I know how it can feel when we have to accept our shadow side instead of wanting to stuff it into a closet, lock the door, and throw away the key. I can comprehend why someone does not want to forgive someone who intentionally destroyed their life and is not ready to move past the pain. Everything is information that no longer serves us in these mature adult bodies. The information does not have to define you. When a person is ready, they can heal and release their story of feeling hopeless, victimized, depressed, traumatized, or stuck on a hamster wheel loop. Our stories are not designed to become a permanent label of disappointment, dread, or regret. So be gentle compassionate and kind to yourself. That said, we would like to take everyone down memory lane to the sweet spot. The sweet spot is 4D human consciousness because all of us have prayed or desired at some point in our lives to have someone forgive us when we needed someone to be our friend and accept 350 us as being perfectly imperfect to see our flaws scars and choices is just information and opportunities to learn that should not define us or label us. The best example of the sweet spot is when someone shows you mercy, forgiveness, and acceptance when you made a mistake or screwed up. Another sweet spot could be when someone inspired you and saw something in you that you at the time could not. There might be a time when someone showed you patience when learning to ride a bike for the first time or a best friend accepting you at your lowest point for being human because nobody's perfect. These gifts exist now. Anyone can raise the vibration and embrace self-acceptance, self-forgiveness, and self-compassion. That is what Master the Upper Rooms is all about. Examine the chart and take the next step up, 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 up into 4D human consciousness. We know some people want to skip the steps and sprint to the finish line, but this is not a race. Slow and steady wins the race. Therefore, there are steps one must take and follow to be set free. We have all heard the saying, patience is a virtue. Showing patience towards oneself can be challenging when someone is stuck in 3D human consciousness. It is all about the self, and I want it now. It doesn't work that way. One must become what they seek. All those 4D human consciousness steps exist within the vibrational range of 200 to 500. Each step offers a gift not only to oneself, but to everyone within your world. So let's dive deep into the deep end and explore the shadows below regarding unhealthy pride. Pride, 175. 
Many people think and feel that pride, sh that you know, a person should have a strong sense of pride in themselves. We would have to agree and disagree with this mindset because there is a difference. One person can be confident, passionate, motivated, driven, and believe in themselves. They are not egotistical, demanding, or treating people indifferently. They are friendly and fun. So this is a healthy form of pride. The negative side of pride, which we are referring to, is the egotistical, demanding, my way or the highway attitude and mindset. This prideful perspective is destructive. People who are stuck in pride will treat people indifferently. A person is immediately sized up, judged, and labeled within seconds or minutes. I like you or I don't like you. In their mind, they are above or better than the other person. A person is being sized up too quickly and unfairly instead of being accepted. 350. As someone who is just different. Nobody likes to be judged or sized up. But people keep doing it. Another aspect of pride that holds people back from maturing as adults and being stuck in the ability to admit and face that they are doing or saying is inaccurate. Okay? For example, a friend talked about how her partner is addicted to Twitter. This person takes all the content they read as factual when it is not. Even when this person said one thing and another person fact-checked the comment and was able to prove them wrong, this person clung to the belief that they were right and the other person was wrong. They even yelled and had a childish fit trying to make the other person feel stupid and wrong. Some call this pattern the big D's. It is the ugly cycle of defense, deflection, and denial. That is why prideful people will use denial as a get-out-of-jail card. They will do and say anything not to feel shame or humiliation because that is a deep-seated inner child wound for them. Have you ever met anyone like that? I sure have, several times. Vanity. Vanity lives within this area. Two-faced gossip, stuck-up people, prestige, money means power, craving power and control. And a bully are in the same category. When someone is stuck in pride, they tend to be scorekeepers, defensive and rigid. And they don't trust people based on their life experiences. They are all about the self. So here is a list of emotions, behaviors, and thought patterns for someone who aligns with the frequency 175, pride. Verse 1, some can pretend to be bored, seeking constant attention, excitement, wealth, status, success, or trying to one day become happy and the day never arrives. They are chasing a dream that society, their culture, church, community, friends, or family members believe will bring them happiness, but will not. Next one. Many successful millionaires are coming out of the closet and sharing their stories of how to find genuine, realistic, authentic happiness. They all say the same thing. Some were stuck in an obligation to please and appease their family members, peers, community, and the societal standards. Some found themselves stuck in the mindset of fear and lack. Many knew they were chasing a dream and eventually got burnt out. They realized they were fighting the universe because of all those limiting beliefs planted within their consciousness that they must do this, should do that, or you better do it, or you'll regret your entire life. Zero freedom or flexibility. They had enough of the corporate rat race. They wanted happiness and peace of mind, which only exists in 4D. Next example. Others can be cold, distant, withdrawn, disconnected, 
out of place, aloof, and have a pattern of rejecting people. They lack emotional intelligence. And so a good example of some of those people would be workaholics, okay? People in big top, VP, corporate people, they're really, they can be that way. Next example, I have known prideful people who get satisfaction from hurting another. That is why they are so guarded and vulnerable to attack. If they attack a person first, they believe they are in control. They have the attitude that they are in charge and you are not. So they quickly make an example of you. These types of prideful people are also fault finders and manipulators. Some seek a scapegoat to deflect judgment upon themselves. Next example. We have all seen prideful people with an inflated sense of entitlement and ego who believe they are superior, above, or better than the average person. Next example. Individuals stuck in vanity tend to constantly find disapproval in other people's hairstyle, appearance, clothing, the car they drive, the house they live in, the people they associate with, and their career choices. Vain people are incredibly insecure and lack empathy. Aging is never a graceful process for them. They will fight it tooth and nail, trying to appear youthful, ultra skin or fit, and almost like a porcelain doll. It is rather creepy to see all the failed celebrity plastic surgery outcomes on television. Next example, this lastly, is conditional love. Prideful people use love as a tool or weapon. Here are some examples. I will love you more if you do this. I will accept you into my inner circle if you do this for me. Or you must prove yourself by doing something unkind to another person I do not like to be worthy of my attention or affection. There are so many rules, conditions, and hoops. It must be exhausting. But I? I fell victim to those manipulation games growing up. I finally got to the point when I said, screw this. I must love myself first because I am attracting the wrong people and potential partners. Here's another one. Some can be stuck in the idea, belief, concept, and social ideology that success comes from working hard. I must fight for what I want or steal it from another. Some believe that life is a series of struggles and to be truly happy, I have to do it exactly this way or my mom or dad will cut me out of their will. Here's another one. Prideful people can be workaholics and perfectionists. And this example goes beyond vanity and into a different category of perfection. Their appearance must be flawless. The scale in their bathroom dictates what they will eat or consume today or in the next few days. They can be harsh, cruel, and rigid about their weight, appearance, and body. They are constantly fighting their body and many of them mentally and verbally beat themselves up. It can go as deep as how they treat their animals and those they love. Everyone must be perfect in their mind. It can be painful to watch at times because the only one they are generally hurting is themselves. I have met women who appear flawless, run five miles a day and hate their bodies from the neck down. Others are smiling but screaming inside, always wearing a mask and pretending life is peachy when they are slowly dying inside. A prideful person clings to their material possessions. And this is the last one. They cling to their material possessions and is afraid that someone might steal from them, damage or destroy the material items they worship. And when we die, we can't take them with us. And there are times when their loved ones hated your doll collection, toy cars, baseball cards, or DVD collection. 
Let me give you an example. When my older brother passed away, he had a massive DVD collection. Even after everyone went through the collection, boxes and boxes went to Goodwill or charity. The odd thing is he was always worried about money, but would rather complain and go without food when he had so many DVDs he could sell. He never did. So all these examples prevent people from stepping outside their comfort zone and exploring new ideas, concepts, and realities. The real question is, what do you want to achieve in life? Many people seek simplicity, peace, and happiness. Yet in this material, social media-driven world, it is challenging to press the stop button and go within. Everyone is so busy. Yet deep down inside, many of us want a break before we experience burnout or identity erosion. That is why courage 200 is essential. Find your voice. Speak your truth. Go within and start living your life instead of what is expected or demanded. So if any of this spoke to you, please be gentle with yourself and the people you know. I genuinely believe people are doing the best they can with the information and resources they have. Some of this information might inspire you to go within and motivate you to step outside your comfort zone and explore new ways of thinking, acting, and behaving. Others might get mad, and that's okay. The truth can make some people angry. But if one finds himself doing the big D's, defensive, deflection, and denial, realize that the universe presented an opportunity to you and for you to examine the big why. The why can set you free because it might be a learned behavior. Now, I have to share this last example, and I almost left it out. Some religious figures can be so influential and controlling. I overheard the story today about a daughter who left her congregation and wanted to buy a new car. A gentleman is selling his car for $1,000. That's a steal. And wants to still be friends with her, even though the church forbids it. He asked the church if he could sell the car to her And the pastor said, no. The mother, who is still a member, also asked the pastor, and he said, no. This is wrong. This is a clear example of control, manipulation, and rigid black and white thinking. Eventually, or hopefully, people within that congregation will have enough abuse and begin to think for themselves. Follow their hearts instead of what someone else demands they must do. And to be honest, God would say, sell her the car. It's only a car. What's the big deal? The big deal is not with the young woman, but the wounded little boy stuck within an adult body that needs to feel important and in control of others. The truth is can seem harsh when being harsh to kind and caring individuals. So next time I will discuss parenting and why some people say, help, my parents suck. I will unpack that concept with compassion, wisdom, truth, and unconditional love. Because I did say those exact words growing up and I can now see the flip side without the 3D thought patterns and emotions. So, like always, thank you, thank you for listening. Share this with anyone that you know. It might help them. Give them a sense of relief. Just broaden their perspective, okay? And if you want to comment, comment. I always respond to people, and I like to hear what people have to say. 
So thank you for listening. Have a fantastic day. And love and light, Carrie Logan, your host. Take care.